Willingness to go ahead with the planned protest? Uh, uh, well, our uh, peaceful rally will go on as scheduled. Uh, you know, even if we didn't have this problem and we decide to hold a rally, we still hold our rallies. So this rally has been fixed for a second, and we'll go ahead to hold our rally. Um, I don't know whether you were able to listen to part of what the president said or is saying. <coughs> I know one of your key demands has been the implementation of CNG. And the president is announcing that, that he's that is providing 100 billion naira for 3,000 CNG cleared uh, smart credit boards. Will this have any impact on that? That 3,000 will be for Lagos. And we have 36 states and the FCT. So if that is, because I have not listened to it, if that is the situation, 3,000 buses, you know, and that even will not go to rural areas. He's also saying that uh, he's going to monitor the impact of inflation uh, and high gas prices. As part of as part of macroeconomic policies or what, by the time you have a single market, and then you are not having anything that has comparative advantage, you are you are even energy is import driven, and then how are you going to control it? How are you going to control somebody that is change dollar at the extent of maybe 900? Are you going to tell him to sell at uh, below the price? How are you going to tell even NEPA today with the cost of production not to increase tariff? You know, even corn in the villages that was sold at 18,000 by February, now it's about 56,000. How are you going to control it? How are you control the woman that goes from the house and transportation increase three times to reduce the cost of Gary? So we need to, you know, understand all those things, probably because we have not listened to Mr. President's speech. By the time we listen to it, we understand, you know, where that is going to. But it's important that you have mentioned this, you know, for us to equally tell you how we are. And we're talking of practical economics, you know. It's unless you tell us the issue of checking the production and then the refineries working, producing locally, the CNG option, taking care of, which will bring down cost of transportation. By the time you do all these things, you know, you can, now, you can gradually see you know, then what is the cost, purchasing power of the worker? Can any, a worker still go to work? You know, all those ones, maybe that's why we say we listen to it and take them holistically, you know, uh, and continue the conversation. Now, uh, you have mentioned and <coughs> spoken about peaceful protests, but what are the measures in place to ensure that uh, the protest is not jammed? Well, that one is simple. The NSC have been in the barricade for years. Our protests cannot because I don't know of any number of people that are more than us that will come there and hijack our protests. Unless somebody is going to instigate that, you know, the NLC rallies and protests have never in the history be hijacked. But this language, each time we want to protest, that's the language you hear that our protests will be hijacked. Now, when you have an information, you know, as a security personnel, police, DSS, whatever, it's their duty to provide security for us, to make sure that it's not hijacked. And that's the duty of the uh, Nigerian police and the DSS. You know, and I hope that in this particular instance, they will provide security for us so that this protest will be peaceful you know, in, the, in the light of what is happening. But I think the dividends are coming up with uh, maybe some of the Mr. President's uh, promises in put, you know, because we have lived in this country where promises are not translated to reality. So, but we hope, you know, that things will change. Thank you very much. God bless you. Which one, what additional, what additional information do you have for us? Yes, um, I think he has, uh, he has um, gone through of uh, what uh, went through in the meeting. Um, we've uh, had an engagement where government at all did a presentation of what they think. Uh, could be an alternative uh, to PMS and also what could be the palliatives. And um, 
we felt that because they told us that the president was going to make, it, make a broadcast today, and in that broadcast as well, that some of these areas are going to be touched. So we felt it was wise for us to, to retract and we will listen to what the president has to say, and we internalize it, we analyze it, then we now meet tomorrow uh, to further our conversation. Right? Because if the um, uh, bulk of what the president has to say, probably putting timelines to them, and at the end of the day, um, we are now here debating what we don't what we don't have the full grasp of, it may be a bit difficult. So the best thing was to go look at those things that we'll convey tomorrow to make further progress. And if you mm. just put it concisely, how would you describe these uh, interactions with the government so far? Because now Nigerians are watching. We keep having this meeting with the government side, and we don't have any concrete resolution yet. So how would you describe them so far? Ah, yes, um, you know, any opportunity to interact. Uh, I mean, government will not invite us for meetings, and we will say, no, we are not attending meetings. That is not in the spirit of social dialogue. So when you are invited for meetings, you will attend such meetings. And when we go to the meeting, just as we have been, I mean, they have been briefing us. They will give us uh, what they think would ameliorate the challenges. But it's also left for us to look at it and make suggestions on what we... Uh, yes. Uh, you know, you cannot define headway fully until you sign a concrete agreement. Uh, because all we are still doing is exchanging notes. They are telling us what they think could be done. We are also telling them that it is not enough, that they can do much more. So until we reach a concrete agreement, that's when we beat our chest to say we have made sufficient progress. Thank you. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Genuinely, honestly doing it. So what we are talking on, what the appeal that we are making out to, just not the leaders, all Nigerians, please understand what is going on. Please give us that support that is needed and required. We are working. We are trying to change things. We inherited a very bad situation. We are trying to stop those horrible things that we witnessed in the past. We are trying to stop the killings, stop the attacks of the trains, stop attacks of the, our prisons, stop at, uh, I, what they are doing, stop bandits, stop uh, uh, Boko Haram, Iswap, and also the, the problem of our own neighbors across. We have huge challenges. We want to appeal to Nigerians, please, give us a chance. Give us an opportunity. We are working. We have a working president, and he's saying give him chance. We intend to be honest with what we are doing. We intend to be transparent, and we are going to be accountable. We will do what is right and what is necessary to correct the wrongs that people are facing. Please, Nigerians, give us a chance. Okay, sorry, sir. What, why did the government not put in place all the necessary palliatives you know, before taking the policy? We are working on it. We are working. And look at what happened in Adamawa yesterday. We had a situation where grains were kept to be distributed across the country. Hoodlums just went in, destroyed it. Grains that are, ought to have gone all over the country. This is the situation. And we are talking about any little thing, a spark would create serious, uncontrollable situations. Crooks, cheap people, cowards will take, will take advantage of things. That's why we are appealing, please, calm down. Give this government a chance. The Adamawa case is a good one. Grains that were meant to be uh, distributed across Nigeria. Some few people wanted to go in, break and steal. That's why we now appeal to labor leaders that I think this is not the moment to really do anything other than hopefully, you know, give the new leadership chance, encourage them to do what is right, stand by them. We are facing our problems internally and externally. If, I'm, if I may just add to what you just said, what you just asked, uh, why didn't the government roll out the palliatives before? Don't forget that in the, in the first instance, uh, um, the last go government did not even budget for palliatives. Um, and after the president got sworn in, uh, in a matter of three weeks, by a fluctuation of time, there would have been no, there would have been no subsidy anyway. 
And so he sees the moment, and that's exactly what a leader does. He sees the moment, and so you couldn't have had three weeks to plan for palliatives. The palliatives are not things you just roll out at the drop of a hat. Uh, palliatives are things that are planned and things that take time. And even what he's about to do now, I mean, it's, 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 it's not overnight. Uh, they're normally, you know, uh, midterm, I mean, small to midterm uh, uh, measures. And uh, so that, 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 uh, that, that, that is to say that there was no way and no how anyone could have planned and roll out the kind of policies we are rolling out now in a matter of two weeks. Okay, sir, finally, yeah. the, the, the government has accused, you know, a powerful cabals, you know, being behind some of the problems we are having. These cabals, are they not Nigerians? Are they stronger and powerful, more powerful than the security we have in the country? Yes, they are, and that's what, and that's what this government is dealing with. They were, but this was this government was this is a new government. It's a different government, um, and that's what they're dealing with. You first of all you remove the subsidy, and that's dealing with the cabals. That's the first step, and then we we'll do other things uh, um, that will necessarily follow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thank you very much.